SF-podden blir presenterad av Eiens trafikskole och Rentrek Sandefjord. Utstyret blir levererat av speakon.no och vi blir publicerat i samarbete med Sandefjords nettsidor sp.no. Ja. <laughs> nei, nei. <laughs> I dag har vi med oss en helt speciell gäst. Ja! Når vi har spillet på besøk, så har vi ti faste spørsmål som alle må svare på. Det var årets feiring. Nå er det lov å feire sånn når vi ligger under tre tog. Og utens artist, det er ingen ringere enn. Bare sånn for at jeg er ikke noe ulken. Jeg skal bare se hvor spreka meg. SF-podden! Ja, mine damer og herrer, velkommen til episode 93 av SF-podden. Den nærmer seg stygt nummer 100 nå, altså. Uh! I studio da er Leif Tore Markman yes. Ken Skalleberg er jaggu på plass Og det var på tide, Ken <laughs> Er det ingen, ingen leiefirma som har tullet med dig i dag? Nei, i dag har det nå, nå går det litt roligere Ja, det er godt å høre Men, jeg, jeg skulle nå ha, Hadde jeg vært her sist, så hadde jeg ikke vært å ha her <laughs> Det var så sur Lunta var brent for lenge siden <laughs> ja, Sånn er det noen ganger Vi har sittet i Alltid dagene går på skinner Det er noe med det ja. I dag har det virkelig gått på skinner, det må jeg si Vi har sittet her en halvtime allerede Og snakket med dagens gjest For en mann <laughs> Ja uh, Jordi Gonzalez, welcome Thank you so much guys, pleasure uh, It's our pleasure really I just said uh, that we've been sitting here for half an hour talking And mm. uh, <laughs> it just went by like that mm. We Spanish, we cannot keep quiet That's the problem <laughs> <laughs> That's not a problem at all <laughs> And not in podcast um, uh, land at least um, We're going to introduce you uh, By uh, giving you Some questions that we uh, Usually ask New guests from the club mm-hmm. uh, Players or coaches So we're okay. just going to Stick uh, right into that I think Just going to play a little jingle Good Ti faste Efter det Ja, det var min tur. Det blir ikke ti spørsmål i dag, for ja, det er et par spørsmål som dere som har hørt på en del, dere vil, dere vil skjønne hvem det er som mangler, og det er helt naturligt at de ikke er med i dag. Ja. Ok. Ja, også, podcasten vil da foregå for det meste på engelsk, hvis noen skulle lure. Ja. ja. Um, ok. Uh, usually it's ten questions, but um, for very obvious reasons, two of those questions will be left out today. Mm-hmm. I can ask, I can explain to you afterwards why that those are okay. left out. Uh, the first question is your full name and your age, please. My full name is Jordi Gonzalez Aznar. Uh-huh. Okay, <laughs> we'll stick know, with Jordi. I think. So uh, the Z, <laughs> Z, or uh, yeah, is that's pronounced? important. Z, yeah, two Zs because uh, I've been here for some years now and. All the time I see my name is spelled with S at the end. Yeah. And it's yeah. not correct, sorry. I saw it. I, I was doing a little bit of research for, uh, about you earlier today. Mm-hmm. But it was all over the place. <laughs> S said. S said. True. So, and then I saw your Twitter account. And it was two Zs, so I took it from there. Yes, it's two Zs. And uh, as I said, this is my dad's uh, second name, surname. And then we have a second surname from mom. Oh. But normally we are uh, using name and surname. Uh, yeah. But I use both because I mean it's my mom's side, so I feel proud of that. Mm. That's and, nice. And said is pronounced kind of like C in Spanish. I mean, uh, this is I think a sound sound that you are not doing, I guess. But it's Gonzalez. It's yeah. like when you say Barcelona. Yeah. Actually, it's not the same uh, um, letter, but uh, we it's pronu- it's the pronunciation is the same. Almost the same sound. Okay. Yeah, it's the same sound. I think gracias. Yes, it's the same sound. But yeah. um, Jordi is fine. Yeah, it's, Jordi uh, is fine. it's good. But, but it is Gonzalez. Exactly. That's good. Okay. And uh, my age. Yeah, yeah. your age. Uh, I just turned 39 years old uh, the last 28 of May. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, it's a month. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um what was the first club that you usually we say played mm. organized football for but in your case I want to ask what was the first club that you coached? So I guess it was when I was young in my village, small village in the coast in the north of Barcelona, a beautiful place. Uh, actually I recommend you to go there uh if so at some time you are around Barcelona, just 20 minutes to the north in the coast. 
And I guess when I was uh, 17, 18, I was playing in, in my club. I was coaching at the same time some uh, school team in the area. So I guess that's the first time maybe I had the role as a coach. But if you th- ask me about my role into a team as a player, I will say that I already was a little bit coaching there, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. taking the voice and yeah, putting some ideas on practice. But yeah, that maybe was the starting, but I don't know really. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to me like a defensive player, am I right? Me? Yeah. Why? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was my first. <laughs> Did you see playing or? What, what, no, was, no, no. What, what was your position when you played? But I'm going to tell you something, guys. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, you know, in in Spain we play futsal on the street. You know, yeah. we have this small court, five against five. Mm-hmm. So actually, this is the first place where you play oh. when when you're a kid uh, after the school or e- even in the school. You have it's the same here, but of course the, there is not snow there, mm-hmm. so we can play the whole year mm-hmm. outside. So we spend a lot of time playing futsal with friends, or you just go to your uh, village uh, meeting point where kids are bringing footballs and and we just meet there and suddenly you organize like three against three or five against five or whatever with yeah. different people and different ages. We call so, that lucky football in uh, exactly, yeah. and that's every day of the year. So um, uh, in the area I was uh, growing, there is a strong uh, like uh, uh, like boom of futsal. Five okay. against five yeah. to the point that we had a, a team in uh, in the, in second division, uh, professional futsal. Mm. Um, so uh, I've been always playing football and futsal, and when I was junior team uh, or junior player, um, I just decided to get into futsal because uh, it was a good division. I had some friends playing there, and uh, I just took uh, this uh, career sportively. So I was playing in. In different clubs, and to the point when I was 17, 18, I played in the first team of uh, Barcelona. Mm. Uh, I was there a couple of years. At this period, was semi-professional, and it's not the same as right now. But some of the players I was playing at that time became later on superstars with Spanish national team and winning different international competitions, World Cups, European Cups. In futsal. In futsal. So uh, that was that was uh, my career as a as a football player. I never uh, been regretting about taking futsal instead of football because I've been really connected. And actually, Martin knows I use a lot of principles from futsal mm. because at the end I see the same interaction and patterns uh, as we do in football. The difference is like we understand football as eleven against eleven, but actually it's not. I see more uh, three against two. Four mm. against three, I see these small relations all around the pitch and um, and this, the spaces and the the way to create the spaces and, and occupy spaces is something that is pretty pretty similar. Actually, if you think about and everybody talks about the Spanish players, why are they this talented uh, combining with each other? It's not a secret. Everything is start from small side games, mm. and uh, and that's why we could say they develop this type of technique. Mm. Amazing. It's too long answer. I know. Sorry. No, no, no. no, no. But you know, Sunny Fur has a decent futsal team. Okay. In I didn't position. know that. I would like to maybe. Yeah, they they won the not. I wonder if they won this year, first or second place this year in the okay. Norwegian football league. Okay. I know futsal that also. Uh, it was uh, uh, it was like a national team in futsal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a few years ago, it started like uh, really strong. Mm. Uh, but I never had the opportunity to to watch any any game from the top division. So uh, you should be interesting. You should check into absolutely. some of the football. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, there's a lot of old players from from SF. Okay, players. not a lot, but some. Uh, of them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's they've been changing a lot now. So yeah, yeah. But before they're That's, more specialized than they yeah. were. Yeah. Okay. Uh, question number three. <laughs> 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 um, when did you uh, you you kind of have already answered this? But um, when did you know that you had some kind of potential to play professional? Futsal in your case, then. I think it would be a little bit pretentious to say I was professional because at this time we didn't think in the way we think today about being an athlete. We train every day, and we had, I mean, yeah, it was demanding, of course, and, and really competitive. Uh, but uh, but I never considered that I, we I was professional. Uh, I think I really train and compete at a good level. 
but outside of uh, of the the pitch, it was like regular life. My studies at the university, my friends, my family, and and having fun. So it was not the same uh, today. A professional athlete maybe has to care a little bit more about uh, resting periods and be yeah, just not do things that. We did and when we were in the twenties, <laughs> I guess. But it was not because it wasn't. We didn't see it in the same way, and no. uh, and it was like that. So uh, I just, uh, yeah, I just think that I could play at some level. And if you ask me about why coaching, I, I guess all coaches at some point we didn't be in a top professional level in football we are a bit footballers yeah. and frustrated that we want to be on the pitch and mm -hmm. actually if you ask me what do you most enjoy when you train every day is just put my shoes on and have some passes with the players this is what i want mm -hmm. and i love when marty even if he's gay that he i mean he's a great football player he's uh, playing sometimes with us i really enjoy to do it as well so if i have the opportunity this is really nice and uh, and i really love it so yeah, I appreciate the question, but I don't think uh, I deserve that. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not. I was not that good. So well, I, I I keep my right to disagree with you. But okay, uh, okay. <laughs> but uh, when did you realize you have a potential to be a professional coach? Then, uh, as I said, I think we love so much the game that at some point you want to be as close as possible. So actually, I always wanted to study sports science degree at the university. So of course, this step connect everything to yeah. to arrive to the point of us to have this professional profile mm -hmm. from the academics, and then in, get into the practice, uh, starting with as every coach with academy teams, and develop your profile as as uh, as a coach, and step by step continue the studies. Uh, I took a master's degree in uh, sports science in in Barcelona as well, and actually today I'm still continuing with my studies because I'm uh, I'm uh, running my PhD in Liverpool. Uh, so study for me is something that happens always, all mm -hmm. the time, and um, and is always there. So at the end, is a way to be related with with football, and and I love coaching. I think my personality as well helps me a lot to to interact with people. I really believe in people. As I said before, I really like to be with people and I really love to take the potential of every individual. Mm. So that made me, uh, that gives me a lot of possibilities. Football is giving me the possibility to work with these people. At the same time, I love traveling. So this is a great opportunity as well to see all around the world if possible. So I think has a lot of plus to work in football, mm. yes. A PhD in sports uh, science? Yeah, actually, my PhD, you will say, I know people knows me as a physical coach, uh, but, I, you know, I'm a football coach, and actually I'm more interested into the brain than the muscle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my my PhD is based in, uh, in uh, team cognition and interaction. Mm. So it's a lot of psychology there. It is a lot of methodology there. Uh, and it's, uh, of course, physiology, but it's not like the main core of, of the topic. I can explain much because I'm at the starting point. I <laughs> mean, the, in this starting point of the research. But uh, as I said before, it's it's nothing about be stronger or faster. Mm. It's about be smarter, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm I am so flabbergasted. This is so this is so <laughs> yeah. amazing. Okay. Yeah, it really is. I mean, we have we have spoken to to quite a few. Uh, football personalities throughout these 93 episodes we have done this mm. and by far our two Spanish coaches has been the most challenging guests in the form that you are so extremely knowledgeable mm -hmm. in your topics in your subjects and it's amazing to, to talk to you it's really amazing I appreciate and uh, at the end look uh, we understand our profession as uh, I mean at the end Football is not going to change the world. Uh, we are aware about that we are working in a bubble, but we can make people feel happy. Uh, mm. As soon as you have your feet on the ground and you try to be as professional as possible, uh, we give 24-7 to not be the best, but at least to respect this, uh, this profession. So when we compare who are the best and how much we can be close to what they deliver, I think we have the high responsibility to, as I said, at least be as close as we can to them. Mm -hmm. 
And basically because our players deserve that, uh, the club deserve, I just consider that we are paid to do that. Mm. So I deserve my salary. And to deserve my salary, I need to give everything I have. And I deserve uh, all these things, but at the same time, I feel committed to give everything to Sandefjord today, to the supporters, to you guys that you are following the club and spending time with me. I mean, I think that's fair enough. It's a win-win relation, isn't it? We, 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 we like to think so. <laughs> okay, um, <clears throat> moving on. Uh, question number four. I have never used so much time on those questions. It's my before. fault, guys. No, I'm no, sorry. No, There's just cut no, no, no. Question number you, you, 400. You, you do not need... You do not need... <laughs> exactly. you do Actually, not, you're too quiet. You, you, I'm talking too much. You didn't say anything. No, I'm no. listening. Okay. You it's do warming need up. to apologize. <laughs> this, is, this is very, very good. Um, can you name one or, or maybe some people that you mean have has been um, especially significant for your development as a, as a coach, your career as a coach? Mm-hmm. Good question. Uh, of course, one name is Per Matthias Hogmo. Mm. It's maybe it's, uh, of course, the, the closer uh, I have had uh, during the last years. And the one gave me the opportunity to really make the step from... Uh, yeah, at this time, we met when I was in Jugor in Stockholm, in Sweden, uh, in the first team. But of course, he gave me the opportunity to make the step to international football. And uh, and he has been like my mentor in many ways. This is uh, one person uh, who is always uh, a reference for me since we started to work together because uh, I could learn what was uh, a real uh, um, uh, leadership. Hmm. I could see the difference between uh, a boss and a leader. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, and that was at this period a great learning time for me to see how uh, without using the traditional way of uh, yeah, running groups, you could, with class and elegance, to develop a group and to actually take performance uh, of the group. Uh, so I learned a lot in that way. He, and he is, after that period, a good friend, and we have a good contact after working together in the national team. And uh, at the same time, he's one of these person. I always say the same. You could guys sit with him and he will take notes about what you're saying because he's not that person who, who even having the experience he has and the time has been in the business, uh, knows uh, everything, absolutely not. He's always curious to know whatever you do, if it's interesting and uh, and, and can help him to develop. Uh, this is the type of person is Matthias. So, of course, full respect for him. And, and in my case, I just appreciate all the time we have been together. Mm. And the second person, I don't know. I mean, I have to think. I guess I could talk about some teacher I could have when I was younger at the university when we started in, into the more uh, football background uh, during my, my academic uh, time. Uh, but... Uh, you know, in Spain we have, or in Barcelona, we have uh, uh, many people that has been having a strong influence in our profiles, uh, from uh, from the physiology to the to the football area as well. So, actually, I'm not that t- type of guy who is always picking some names to just follow these people. I'm just interested in, okay, I take a little bit from this person yeah. and I think that's interesting. And I take a little bit from this person, I think it's interesting. And I just yeah. create maybe my own way of doing, I don't know. Always mm. looking for some new inputs. Exactly. So no matter where you learn it, as long no. as you learn it. and, and like Because I think I think to create the stereotypes, it's a little bit uh, dangerous. Mm. Uh, you know, in Spain, okay, Spain has traditionally good football. Uh, good football players, the league is pretty pretty good, and uh, I would say top three, of course. Uh, and we cannot underestimate other leagues and learn from them and pick interesting new methods or ideas or ways of doing. So obviously, in this business, you cannot get into uh, only one piece of the of the of the puzzle. You have to be open mind and see that football develops and evolve. And this is never ending. Mm. So you have to be updated as much as possible. And that's why we need to travel, we need to talk, we need to meet people and, and discuss about football. 
Very, very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, I know. Um, most people in Norway uh, who is a little bit into football, they um, they have a foreign club that they support. Mm -hmm. It can be an English club, Italian club, S Spanish club, whatever. Um, what is your club? The I'm, club that you support. I'm I'm the worst fan in football. <laughs> <laughs> But look, it's like Marti. I mean, he knows every name, every club, every player all around. So he he could be the best uh, expert commentator on TV. I'm the worst. <laughs> as simple as that. <laughs> For real. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, You don't have any it, team, it, really. What, the only thing I said, okay, of course I, I I support Barcelona, but not actually because I feel like the colors and the club uh, like part of me. It's because we are coming from that school. Mm. So yeah. the way I understand football is the way the last year has been showing all around uh, uh, how football has to be played. Uh, but as I said before, I cannot get just stick into that type of football mm. actually today if I'm thinking when we have meetings and we talk about how are we going to face this team how can we go away from this uh, pressure that they can put on us uh, today I was thinking Jordi you are giving solutions that maybe five years ago you never could will do mm -hmm. I mean they go away from my uh, principles principles of how I understood football before so mm. yeah Uh, of course, Barcelona is like the school where we're coming. The teachers we had are from there. Uh, we understand the yeah this game in this way. Uh, but I'm not supporting uh, any specific club. Real Madrid was fantastic uh, many years ago when it was all these Galacticos. Mm. The football they did was amazing as well. But we see today uh, all the teams that also they are interesting to follow. So I'm not a supporter. No, I'm uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm a Sandefjord supporter now. Mm. That's this good. Is what, this is what I am. <laughs> nice. You're a professional. Very That's very good. Are. Very good answer. I must say. <laughs> polite, eh? Yeah, polite. <laughs> <laughs> Too polite. Yeah. <laughs> Who is, in your opinion, the best player you have coached? Mm. Mm, because what quality no. yep. or quality talent? Talent. Yeah. Your choice. Hmm. You can pick professional football yes. or professional football. Pro professional football, yeah. Mm. <laughs> As I said before, you know, I'm into minds and mm -hmm. brains. This is yeah. why I'm interested. Of course, when we were in the national team, uh, observing um, Odegar Martin, yeah. not only on the pitch, also outside of the pitch, was pretty impressive. How a young kid coming into this like not tough environment, of course, there's some pressure there. Uh, he was handling the situation that was uh, <laughs> pretty impressive to to see. How young, young was Martin Odegaard when you worked with him? He he played his first game. He, actually, his first game was the, the same uh, game uh, I was there first time with the national team. Mm. And uh, he was 15. Uh, we play in, uh, in the West Coast uh, against, I think it was United Emirates. Mm. And uh, you could see, I remember to be in one of the sites uh, making the warm up. And we had like at this time, like a protocol of four or five minutes. And we were like working this protocol during the week. And I could observe how this kid uh, could follow exactly every step of the warm up in the right way by himself. Yeah. And then I understood that, okay, he is seeing something else. But, and that was not a surprise when you could connect that with the way he is understanding the spaces, as I said before, or mm -hmm. the interaction. Yeah. And even better when you could see him outside uh, dealing with media, with this calm and, you know, mm. that was pretty impressive. At least that was interesting for me to observe how uh, at this age you could uh, have this uh, level of, uh, yeah, of grow up at this time. So that was interesting. Then... Pff, If we talk about quality on the pitch, as I said before, I I guess everyone has different type of yeah, qualities. Of course, mm. it's the same when you ask me about uh, uh, about uh, 
coaches or important people. I think I pick something from everywhere. Yeah, mm. yeah. And uh, everyone. I think all of us we had some talent, and uh, I want to learn all talents around and just emphasize this talent for for these people. Once again, a really polite uh, answer. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, you named Martinelli. The most, that's, most uh, polite person yeah. I ever met. But I guess that's <laughs> it. that's also because at this point, of course, it was interesting to see Martin uh, uh, having his debut in in professional football, also out of Norway. So that was interesting for all of us to observe and learn uh, uh, how he was developing himself at, in this environment. Mm -hmm. Of course. Very very good. His dad used to play for Sunderland. His dad was playing Sandefjord. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I didn't know that. No. As a kid, he um, he was a Sandefjord supporter. Mm -hmm. Just picture of him in uh, Sandefjord uh, in top. Mm -hmm. mm. Good. Yeah. Everybody is at the end connected to Sandefjord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Football or summer place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. If you were not supposed, uh, if you were not going to work in professional football. What do you think you would be doing for a living? That's a here I have a, a pretty clear answer for you guys. Yeah, I will be an artist, a painter, living in a small island in Spain called Formentera, uh -huh. or Ibiza. Yeah, <laughs> Part you, don't, you don't paint in Ibiza, <laughs> do you? Yeah, you do. You do. No, but seriously, you know this. You know the, these are the two islands I like, and yeah. I've been there since I was uh, 17, 18, You know, yeah. first trips on summer, blah blah blah. But uh, I have another side of uh, of me, which is my artistic side. I was studying arts at the university as well, mm. so I like painting and I like uh, yeah, I like art. So this is something I do when I have time, which I don't do right now. So <laughs> Obviously. Obviously, it's not possible. Marty, the only Marty. thing you can paint now is Marty, because yeah. he's the only one you see. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so this is for sure something that I will do someday. Mm. If I quit football or no one wants me, or I'm not ready to take the next job, I will uh, be a painter in a small village close to the sea and uh, just enjoying In, in either Fuerteventura or Ibiza. Yeah, it could be in the coast, in the north of Barcelona as well. There is nice villages there. Okay. So and how, how do you approach the painting board? Do you have a glass of red wine and uh, the brush in the other hand? And exactly. Or? Some nice music. I create mm -hmm. nice environment. You know, this is this is life. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. This is really this, amazing. This is the other side <laughs> of me. We, we've been talking about doing a, a podcast on a boat. With some red wine, and I think you're a good candidate. No, to be no, a for sure you have to invite me now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's me or me. Yeah. <laughs> very good, very good. Uh, the final question. Yes. Where on the table will Sandefjord end up this year? Uh, it's a question that is a clear answer as well. I mean, otherwise we will not be here. Mm. So. Uh, Sandefjord, of course, is going to be at the position that is going to allow the team to stay in Elite Serie. This is clear answer. It's not another way. It's Otherwise, we'll be uh, uh, setting our minds in the wrong way. Mm. Yes. So it's no choice. It's only one way, one direction, and uh, we are full com convinced that that's going to be. Mm -hmm. So we know that we are on the way. Everything takes some time. I know time runs against us, mm. but now we are trying to speed the wheel until that wheel gets some pace. Um, that's the investment, and we try to do it as fast as possible, as good as we can, just to reinforce and give all the credit to players and club, all the effort they're going to do or they're doing, of course, to just take all this information that we are delivering and all the changes that we try to add into the club now to improve uh, the process is helping a lot. So I think we are pretty united and we know the direction and the target. It's one of the first thing, I think the first thing Marty was presenting in front of the group. And since that day, everybody has been pretty focused in, in, uh, in going and achieving that target. So. Of course, there's there are always question marks, but this is part of the game. Mm. What we know is this: we put this question mark aside, and we put our eyes into that door with bright light at the end of the tunnel. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I think it's like a revelation. Got a man <laughs> I was just going to say. <laughs> I was like just going to say. I think Life Tour just met his savior. Or something. Uh, this, this is, <laughs> if you meet him out with a glass of wine, just be careful. <laughs> no problem. No problem. <laughs> You said before I'm a defensive player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is I very, think, very good. I think you have the height and the, the personality of being you're, you're you're a perfect captain's fit, obviously. Thank you. So I just saw you as a defender. I don't know why. That's I don't know, but I could be a balanced player, that's true. I could mm -hmm. be number six. Okay. So I can play right left, sometimes forward and just be controlling. Especially now with my age, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Central midfielder. Yeah. Um, I, I have to ask, uh, ask because you you talked about that you always want to learn new things, and uh, I read that you are really into new technology and using that uh, in your work. Mm -hmm. And I saw some. Is it called K boxes? Wow. Where did you read that? Uh, it was from the, your time at Duke, or? Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, the thing is, uh, this is more into the physio physiology part or physical part, new tools or strategies that we can bring from science so we can help the players to develop some specific type of uh, capacities, in that case, strength. Mm. So this is something that actually is pretty, not old, but has yeah at least 15 years uh, and the funny thing is that this is something we learned in Spain, actually, at the university. But it's coming from Sweden. Okay. <laughs> this type of training, which is called eccentric training, uh, was uh, invented in Sweden by Per Tesk with the idea of uh, uh, helping astronauts in the space to avoid atrophy in their muscles. Oh. So they could work... Uh, without gravity, oh yeah, uh, which is normally what you can do with free weights. Mm. So then they realized that this type of training was really beneficial in terms of developing strength and uh, and creating yeah different type of um, improvements in the muscle structure. So that's something that I've been using for many years, and at some point, of course, uh, I would like to add this type of tools uh, into Sandefjord. Uh, but it's just something really specific uh, mm. with uh, our physical plan. Uh, yeah, but that that's all. It's not a big thing. I mean, everybody knows about this training uh, and everybody or many of the clubs are using that. Uh, but it's true that uh, there is some video all around uh, YouTube or yeah. whatever uh, about this type of, of uh, technology, yes. I really like uh, people that crave after new... Uh, experiences and, and knowledge so mm. it just uh, set my mind off because I haven't heard about it before okay so but you have you have uh, also <clears throat> changed the way that the team are training you you changed it into shorter um, sessions mm -hmm. and more sessions mm -hmm. isn't that true yeah I I I don't know if uh, because I have not the reference as well oh, of we how have. was before <laughs> we have you have yeah, yeah. Uh, what we know is about how do we understand Air Force has to be performed. Mm. Doesn't matter the day of the week, uh, this is our job, which type of Air Force we want the players to do. Uh, but the intensity of or the way we need to approach the situation has to be always 100%. Yeah. It's nothing to deal with. And we don't train uh, <laughs> 20% intensity. Oh. This is actually something that I don't understand. Because uh, you don't eat twenty percent or intensity or breathe twenty percent intensity. Some should eat twenty percent. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Twenty percent <laughs> amount of food, but not. You know what I mean? It yeah, is yeah, a way. Yeah. I mean, if we play football, we pay, we play as good as we can yeah, and yeah. as intensive as we can. Then, when we plan the week and the trainings, we decide according to the training design. And this is so funny because for me or for us, actually. It's, a, it's an art mm. just to design an environment to uh, invite the players to interact with each other. Then we know that when they interact, they're going to run longer, they're going to run shorter for that amount of time, mm. blah, blah, blah. So this is the funny part of coaching, actually, mm. that they can interact according to your plan and you can replicate football scenarios. Let's say that a team is pressing high, how we replicate that on training mm. and which type of efforts they're going to do. So, for example, today... We know that it's the second day after a game. We know that many teams in Norway, they are resting today, mm. but we don't. Mm. We were resting yesterday because we have to rest 
the stress that we had after the game on Sunday. Mm. And we really value that part as well. After a tough game, really demanding, be home. This is a part of recovery as well. And today, physically, we were recovering as well. But at the same time, we have a game scenario mm. where physically we were not committing the recovery process so the guys could feel okay, but we were playing football. Mm. And we were discussion about football. So um, it's true that the way we are training, the method we call it, it's uh, a little bit different. And I will say it's more uh, influenced by all this uh, learning that we have yep. from, from Spain, yep. Portugal, uh, etc. Countries around south of, of, of Europe, yes. Uh, but intensity is something that we cannot, uh, it's nothing to discuss. It has to be always 100%. Mm -hmm. Because at the end, it's about small details. Uh, sometimes we said, you can do something like really soft and see players passing the ball with each other in a really soft way, you know? It's not interaction, it's not like, they, it doesn't look like real. Mm. For us, that's a waste of time. Mm. Or do we do it well, or we go home? Mm. It's nothing yep. in between. Yep. And uh, with resting or working is the same. We're gonna give the players the way to really rest, but at the same time, when we work, we don't work fifty percent. We give everything. And basically, because we are in a situation as well that we <laughs> we are not allowed to do anything else than this. As I said before. If the only way is that tunnel with the light at the end, to arrive there is to put everything uh, on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if we just lack a 1%, then we are not doing our best to achieve the target. Because that's the first thing I noticed when, when you two took over the training role, the passes. Mm. Much harder, much direct than before, as you say. No more loose passes. All the passes was really hard. Mm. More direct. Mm. So, and it looks it's like you giving more effort to when the passes is mm. like that. Yeah. So I noticed that straight away after the first game that Marty mm. took over. Exactly. And that's good because if you attend the training, you will see that now our coaching takes time because we are into all details. Like mm. it could be like this pass that you're talking about. Yeah. But we know that if we reinforce the, those details after a while, we are not going to talk anymore about no. that because the player, uh, he's going to be used to. Mm. Mm. We try to create, always we talk about habits. Mm. How to create habits? Of course, by experiencing the environment. Yeah, yeah. But we can guide them with our feedback, of course. Mm. And as he said, a detail of a pass is everything. Could be mm. everything. We could stop all the training because the body shape before receiving is not the right one. Mm. But we don't go there and say, this is not right. Of course not. We try to create dialogue where we ask, why not? Mm. How do you think you could... Because if we are not on spots of being on detail, uh, we are building a house under the wrong... On the wrong foundation. foundation. Mm. Yep. So at the end, this house is going to fall down. Yeah. Mm. So we need to be clear about to create this strong and, and solid foundation where to really build the house and go from the big house to the small details, but the foundation is key, mm. is where it's going to give us the consistency to really uh, be every weekend from, uh, from today uh, as strong as possible. Mm. And, uh, and I appreciate that you guys, that you there, you could observe uh, these type of things because we really put a lot of effort into that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One other thing you mentioned the, the the hardness of the passes, but I also see um, in counter attacks, for example, uh, that the passes are more forward minded mm. than before. I think the one of the things that irritates me the most in counter attacks mm. is when a player is making a run and the ball gets behind him or at his feet, mm. so he has to stop because mm. <laughs> that the whole movement of the counter attack is is blown away really mm. with a, with one bad pass. Mm. It's really interesting that you talk about that because actually we know that the last third is something where we need to put a lot of effort as well and spend time there mm. uh, because the stats are there. We we are not or we are coming from a period of not scoring. Right now in three games we also score one goal, so it's something to develop. But at the end, 
this last third is going to give us the out product of what happened before we arrive there or early. Mm. We've been spending time creating a solid structure defensively. So mm. we know that the team needs to work together and do this dirty work, mm -hmm. which is not, uh, you know, some players, of course, we don't like to be defending all the time. No, no. But to be dominant and dictating the game, at some point you, you need to, to play without the ball. So how to play without the ball, be strong and take the ball as soon as possible and from there dictate the game. Yeah, this is a part of the this first step I said before, foundation. Now from there, we felt and we feel that after three, four weeks, we can start to actually transfer all these uh, uh, concepts to the last third. And we already did it. But now we feel that, yeah, this is something we can encourage. As you said, take spaces in front, change the rhythm, mm. you know, from one tempo to another one because at the end you want to surprise the opponent. Small details that I agree with you could be much more offensive. It's going to be much more offensive. Uh, but as I said, every, every, first things first, everything needs a process and uh, and we just try to respect uh, the main uh, priorities that we felt were needed and go to, uh, at the end, other type of priorities that are needed. But uh trying to get the line into the the as i said before the final product which is of course scoring mm. oh we could go on we, we could go on and on and on but yeah. uh, <laughs> we need uh, to talk about uh, sunday yes yeah and we're going to play a little jingle compens mod yep and uh the game we're talking about is, of course, Rosenborg. Um, I have to say, when I saw the team sheet, it was quite hard <laughs> to Why? see what kind of formation you were going to use and who was playing where. Uh, and I also think the formations you play with are kind of fluid because uh, I heard Marty say that you were playing four at the back. Mm -hmm. um, but I saw three and five many times. I think okay. when I tried to set up a, te a team mm. when I watched the game. Mm. and then, how, But explain me why or how did you see this formation? No, because I think um, we call Kirstrepe score Raima. Mm -hmm. And Raima, for example, uh, for example mm. uh, was pushing much higher than he usually does. Mm -hmm. But he was playing as a central defender, right? Mm -hmm. and, but I th thought he looked more like a, a left defender in a three-back system. Mm-hmm because of his movement and where he placed himself and mm. and also Erik Melle I didn't I think he looked more like a wingback than a, uh, a left back mm -hmm. but this is the ending topic to discuss or never ending I would say of course <laughs> because everything depends on what do we understand uh, for or by a system or what do we understand when we talk about the system mm. if it's five or four or three at the end doesn't matter we talk about behaviors because uh, you can play with four and Christer as a central back, mm. but behave as if you are a left uh, central back yeah. and driving the ball into the middle, which I think is what you tried to tell me. Yeah. It's based in principles. If you have the space in front of you, you drive the ball until someone is coming to you. Mm. This principle doesn't matter if you play with three or four, isn't it? No, it's, I agree. It's about, the, it's about you the ball and the space in that case, and at the end, the opponent. So uh, I s understand your point. Uh, Eric, for example, he was fullback because we played with four on the back, mm. but he was high. Yeah. But he was high because it was based in principles as well. If Christian has the ball, you have to, to also stretch mm. so he can maybe attract uh, Eric Mark and then he can play to Eric or Eric can take the space in behind and then you commit that defender it's a little bit technic or technical you know it's, it's mm. uh, I don't want to get in deep into that but at the end it was a 4-2-3-1 uh, mm. yeah <laughs> so I, we, I, I hear you say it but I didn't see it if you know the what thing, I mean but the <laughs> thing is we wanted to have more control in the central corridors and uh, Eric uh, and Rick sorry and uh, Emil they gave us this uh, this balance in front of the back line, and then uh, and then we had um, 
Hovar. Mm. as a link player mm. in between this build up and the last third mm. with the last pass and we could see how he was pretty good uh, dropping into the pockets mm. in one touch turning and starting to face the back line I think that was really interesting mm. and defensively you could see we were not giving so many chances in central corridors they couldn't play through so many times and they were playing out all the time mm. the good thing is that with uh, Flamur and, uh, and Mua we were actually squeezing them to play out. And at the end, we were uh, uh, just pressing two against one, three against one. They had to play back. We know that they like to play from the strong side to the weak side. So they play these diagonals and we were aware about that. Mm. Of course, we play against Rosenborg. It was really difficult because they have uh, a lot of uh, good players. So this is part of the game again. We had a plan. We predict what they could do. I think we the game plan was there and and we could anticipate that a scenario, uh, and one of the reasons we could anticipate it was because this block of four two three one gave us a lot of consistency. Mm. So, but at the end, we are coaches that we think that the system has to be flexible, according to our profile players, of course, and also the opponent. Mm. So you could see guys that. It depends the opponent we're going to face. This system can have some variations. And uh, and of course, this is at the end a variation of the back three. Yeah, It's not much difference. And instead to have one balance, you have two. Mm-hmm. And instead to have uh, uh, yeah, one guy in the middle, sometimes uh, or as a number 10, you have two number 10s. So at the end, it's about principles. The difference is how many plays do you put in every zone uh, developing these principles. Mm. Yeah, it was just hard for an outsider to see yeah. <laughs> a clear formation because yeah. I was I, I was so used to seeing three four three or three five two now mm. for the last mm. four four five years. Mm. So, but what is the difference? We had, for example, four two three one could be a four three three as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm not so focused on formation. No, I'm not. So, no, me no, neither. But but for me, I I to be I, honest, I, I don't even care. No, when they play. I don't look for formations. Mm. I look how the play fits. Mm. Yeah, I understand you, but I I I. You need statistics. No, I, I announced <laughs> I announced the game on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. So and I, what, I what did you have, write? No, I write about uh, what happens in the match. Oh, I thought you write uh, previously to the game a system and maybe. Yeah, I do that as well. When they when uh, try to find the system, yeah, you that's right. So you got frustrated. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> and you need to never mind the there. system. <laughs> if you put another system, I just will say it's correct. It's just a variation of the system, yeah. Yeah. and then and then it's fine. And then you're right. <laughs> but it wasn't that's a, a basic answer. answer. No, 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 absolutely no. not. Because basic just, answer to everything. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. That, but, it was, but everything depends. I mean, you can have a number nine and play with one or two strikers. And this number nine is always playing in behind. Mm. But you can have a number nine dropping as well. Yeah. And the number nine becomes number 10. Yeah. So at, the, nine. so at the end, I mean, as I said, it's not about positioning. And actually, uh, we said something to our players. We don't want the players to be dictated by the position they have on paper. We want the players to behave according to what is needed. So mm. maybe we have a player as a winger that needs to drop in the central area because we need one more player to build up and, and progress. So they have to understand this. Yeah, and no, mm. I agree with that because then I think you're going to get more out of the players. When exactly. They have more like a free roll. It's, um, yeah, it's it's uh, we could Not call it. Role, I understand. You can call yeah. it free roll. Exactly but because more variation. Mm. I was talking yeah. to to Moa for example. Normally, these players playing on the wings, yeah. they are not that much interacting with the ball as we could do with them. Mm. You know, and you want more interacting with the ball as much as possible, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So the point is, if the ball is in the other side, deeper, when we're building up, um, we said, I mean, could you do something instead to wait for the ball coming? Could you make the ball coming to you? And of course, this is an aspect that we're working with players. We don't want them to understand that you're a striker, you have to be there waiting for the ball. That's not the point at all. Mm. That's why we said always that we travel together from the build-up till the end, Mm. offensively and defensively. That's why our backside are creating as many offensive passes as our midfielders. And defensively, we could show against Rosenborg, our strikers were defending as much as any other player on the yeah. field mm. and that was click that was uh, one of the big differences i think uh, not differences but the important points to to highlight 
uh, of why the team was that strong for uh, 85 minutes. And then, of course, a small detail uh, mm. make uh, make the difference. But mm. that's why it's so difficult uh, to be a football player. Uh, you have to be uh, 100% all time. If you miss one second, maybe that's that's the opportunity that the opponent take. Mm. Well, we can just go through the game very quickly. <laughs> Sorry, again. No, 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 no. no. Fire me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Never. N- not at all. <laughs> um, you have a competition. Okay. With a guest that talks almost just, uh, he talks more actually. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sean yes. Constable. Mm, he never shuts up. Great guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great golf player as well. He played he golf? What? Hmm. Didn't see that coming. Uh, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> then I see Happy Gilmore straight away. <laughs> Greatest stroke from the tee. I'm just uh, I'm surprised. I'm okay. T- <laughs> <laughs> I was um, born in a tweed suit. So. <laughs> <laughs> the Rosenberg game. It was quite a game. Um, I would call it a typical uh, Hawaii game, really. It was back and forth all the way through, really. Um, Sandefjord had some good opportunities. In the first half, it was especially two. It was the one when Bindia find, found uh, Storbeck in the penalty box. Yep. And it didn't shoot quick enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there was when Engbrum almost got through uh, along with uh, the goalkeeper, but it, his touch wasn't good enough. No. Um, but I have to say, after the first half, I was really positive. I think Sandefjord was uh, in quite good control, really. Mm. There were some times when the, you got a little bit exposed on uh, the left side. Mm-hmm. There was much room on the left side, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that has to be a consequence of Eric Melder being quite high in the pitch. Mm-hmm. Of course, could be. But uh, I don't know, guys, how do you see this picture in the first half? I was, uh, <coughs> first and foremost, very very, su- laid back. very, very surprised <laughs> to see uh, Sonnefjord play what I felt was that good against Rosenborg. Rosenborg is supposed to be the best team in Norway. Mm. Uh, and Sandefjord really held their grounds throughout the first half. Mm. Um, as you have written, Jörn, maybe Rosenborg had the biggest opportunities during the first half, but the, the opportunities that Sandefjord had was, was quite good. Mm. And they also managed to, to break down much of the play that uh, Rosenborg uh, strived to achieve. Mm. They 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 couldn't play the football they they wanted to because uh, Sandefjord kept messing up their play and their build ups. So I I was very surprised with the first half, mm. positively surprised. And, and then, then you do, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm all the way positive. Uh, how the team looks this way these days, I have nothing else to say. It's just, mm. I think it's a positive way. Mm. Even my dad, who's been really criticizing the team, I go with him, he's 75 mm. years old. Even he was sitting there cheering and clapping. And nice. Yeah, and believe me, when he's clapping, then it's good. <laughs> 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 but it looks more organized. You have a plan behind it, yeah. and it looks like your game plan actually gets through to the players, mm. and they follow them. Because I I see players entering the pitch today, it's different than before. Just mm. just a few months ago, mm. and you see how they react, how they work in the pitch. I see everyone give a hundred percent. They so, believe in what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. really so do. Mm. What I see is just massive changes, and I can't believe how a new team of coaches can do that in such a short time. So you need to be doing something right. <laughs> I mean, we're happy to to see as well uh, or have the same pictures that you have uh, because we see, of course, an improvement. And the first half, as you said, I mean, we we knew that we will find moments and that was important to explain to the players that in front of situations that are challenging us and that will happen, just to understand that we deal with this emotionally because normally when you feel that you are attacked, constantly mm-hmm. by an opponent. We know the strength of Rosenborg in the last third. Mm. You can really drop down your face of uh, keep going. Mm. But the guys, that was impressive. That's why I, I felt, we felt really proud even f- after the first half because we saw that these 45 minutes has been exactly as we predict. We mm. will be threat in the last third. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we survive 
really good together. Mm. We refused many balls. We were coming in the coverings. We were make the recoveries, uh, the runs behind really, really quick and together. So that was a great uh, scenario to observe how in these type of situations, it's just about hard work mm. together, mm. well organized and just following three, four things that we've been reinforcing during the week. So if this type of game is about this, okay, we get to stick into that plan. It's mm. not about being that creative we would like, no, but... Even that, we tried. We tried to build up from the back. We tried to play with Eric uh, under high pressure. We could solve situations playing and combining with players, mm. arriving to the last third with options of creating some chances. So you could see that even knowing that we were punished by them at some point, we never felt punished. No. We always believed and trust in our game yep. plan. Mm -hmm. yep. Because other team could say, we kick the ball and we just go there and uh, they dictate the game. But we never allowed that. Actually, today we were presenting the stats and the possession was 50-50. Mm. I think we had 48 and they had a little bit more. That's all. And in chances, we have, they had more chances, but it was the game with more chances we had. Mm. So actually, exponentially, the chances in front of Rosen were higher than the last two games. Mm -hmm. And the possession, which I think that gives a lot of credit to the team in terms of personality. Yeah, I agree. And that is that is something that I I I'm very glad to see that your possession has gotten off so high mm. because <clears throat> that has been mon one of the most significant problems I think with Sandefjord during the the, the spring half. Mm. Um, we always lost the second ball. Mm. We always lost it, and we couldn't keep the ball in the team, and we were constantly chasing the ball, constantly defending instead of trying to build up a play. Mm. So I'm really happy to see that your possession has gone up so high. And it's just a previous step because you don't only want possession. You only want to locate the possession. And the possession that we want to locate is as high as possible on the pitch. Mm. So we know by fact, we convince 100% that that's going to happen soon, mm. really soon. These passes that they can be deeper will be because now are a little bit more horizontal maybe. We know that... Uh, we're going to create this habit of always, as soon as you can, look forward. And the last the last um, option you have, if it's needed, is to play back. So actually, this location is going to be much higher and we're going to become much more offensive because we have the players, as simple as that. Amazing. As simple as that. As simple as that. Um, in the second half, I think it was more turns to notch up a bit um, and they pushed Sandra back quite hard. But still, Sonnefruit's got a lot of counterattacks that could evolve into something. Mm -hmm. I think Mua, this was the best game I've seen Mua in the Son of a shirt. We'll go back to that later, but um, I really do. Um, there was one situation <laughs> where Eirik was a little bit out of his box and <coughs> picked up the ball. Mm -hmm. and that, that was quite interesting. I couldn't see it uh, as good as you could, I guess, from the bench. And no. uh, I, I don't know exactly. He was a good meter. Outside the box, when he no, so, you, no, his so feet. you mean he was inside inside the box? No, his feet was inside the box. Yeah, his but his hands are one meter long, so he c can't blame him for long hands. Come on, it was not that far no, from the line. His feet, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was a, it was quite fu a funny situation because the Rosmo players they overreacted, especially Bentner, especially Lord Bentner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and he was mind. he was quite lucky not to get a red, I think, because he. Got his hand around, uh, I think it was Flamer's throat or something. Yeah, um, yeah. It was see, it was an amazing that. situation to 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 stand on the sideline where, where my position is uh, during matches, mm. to watch them. Bentner is a good head higher than yeah. Flamer, and he just leaned over Flamer and grabbed him, and I was like, oh, he's going to be getting beaten up now. Mm. <laughs> but that's the result of Sonnefield breaking down. It is. Baseball. Part mm. by part, yeah. yeah, and they get frustrated because they can't ga get the game plan to stick. Yeah, they mm. can't figure out how to break this team down, and then the Rosenborg is pretty good at doing that. And when it can't do that, especially against Sunfield, who's like on the bottom, mm. it frustrates them. And yes, that's why? Yes, types like Bentner flips a little bit. Mm. Yeah, I think. I think it's a fair analysis, of course. We know emotions are part of the game, and we also plan them, or not plan, but we try to predict them at least. At least we try to understand 
what is the conse consequence of our game into the motion of the opponent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I agree with you 100%. Actually, before the goal, we could start to see that our team, not even inviting the team to go a little bit high, the guys felt that we could go higher to mm -hmm. press when we felt the trigger. And that was pretty nice to see at the end that request a lot of physicality. They felt brave and strong enough to do it. Mm. Perfect, beautiful to see. Mm. And they start to kick long balls pretty desperate. We had yeah. the same feeling. Yeah. So I agree with you that at some point they were looking for the plan Z mm. yeah. to see if, uh, and that's fair enough as well, it's part of the game. You, can, you have to have these uh, resources as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I agree that it was pretty uh, beautiful to see that in uh, the last 15 minutes when you know that everything becomes more becomes more chaotic the fatigue is there and the stress it's coming pretty fast the team felt strong enough of course after the goal the last 8 7 minutes everything changed because yeah, it was yeah. it was unfortunately a punch that we didn't expect seeing observing how the was the game was going yeah, yeah. as you said um I just have to mention uh, Raima, that for the one of the first times I've seen since he, <laughs> he was the sound player out on the opponent's box. He's inside the box. It was inside the box. And he's actually on after ride. the ball as well, as far as I can remember. Yeah, yeah. and it, it always went good. The combination always went... Oh. <laughs> it was <laughs> you, close. Yeah. You know that uh, Christer was a striker before he came to St. I heard something, but uh, <laughs> yeah, when he was really young. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he was a top scorer at uh, in his first year in San I think. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we should try. Yeah, maybe. Should. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we have to talk about the goal a little bit. Um, mm. It's Levi that gets the ball after a short free kick, um, and he is allowed to go inside. Uh, I, that's what Eirik said <laughs> after the game. Okay. That, that was the biggest mistake, that it was allowed to go inside and not to push him outside uh, with his left leg. And I said to Eirik as well, I could only see one spot that that shot could go. And that was in that corner. Um, Eirik wasn't... Uh, what can I say? He wasn't He wasn't fully agreeing with me on that. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> That's how I saw it from the from the mm. from the stance that 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 shot could only go in that corner. Mm. So I was a little bit frustrated about that. But yeah, how uh, what could Sanvir have done better in that situation? It's a good question. Of course, we would like to go back a few seconds before that happened, and maybe be a little bit more organized in front of this situation. Because if you observe. Uh, this moment, uh, we are setting the team as they're going to kick the ball as a lateral free kick. Mm. So we are having a lot of people Inside into the, the box, box yeah. just actually pretty much in the other half uh, or in the second post. And uh, and they have numbers. They have a four against two over there. And uh, obviously that's a situation that we need to... We need to analyze. We did it today. We were presenting actually these to to the players, and we were talking about. I mean, it's not even a football, or we will say a pure football moment that we have to deal with. It's more about this transfer moment from one situation to another. Mm. And we've been talking all the time about to create this uh, mentality of be uh, yeah a little bit more alive to be aware about Awake, everything yeah. goes around, even if the game is uh, uh, stopped or mm. in pause, how to see everything, that's important. And we saw, because everything comes from that moment. Evan takes the ball and starts to play when we are not even set. Mm. And then they play wide, two against one, press and cover. It's true that he's driving well with a good uh, uh, tempo shifter, you call it? Yeah. Mm. And that touch leave power a little bit in behind. Yeah, he couldn't get. get <sighs> so it's true. I mean, that's something that collectively it's true we could avoid mm. because it's not isolation isolated situation one against one. Great skills in a counter attack with uh, you know, it's not. Mm. It's more about someone being aware or someone. It means more people, not only one, but someone say, "Hey, boys, this is what we need." 
and of course we could do better as well from outside we should see it and i mean at the end we we have to learn from this uh this type of situations because as you said it's something pretty out of the nature of the game mm. it's just a moment that uh, we think nothing is going to happen but it happened it's the same as the the goals we consider against hogison they are yeah. just corners but this lack of attention or this step to the wrong direction can change everything mm. details details uh Sandvo so had one really good opportunity right at the end from Lucas Dratti mm. alone with the you know the goalkeeper mm. tries to go for a luke as we call it but Hansen saves yeah Flammer was very disappointed in himself I think after that mm. but he had a good explanation because it was after 95 minutes or something like that he got to be tired <laughs> after mm, that game yeah. so it's it's hard for a striker to have run that much in a game and then stay cool in front of the goal it's his job but it's it's hard oh all been quiet <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can you know, I can talk, I can talk all night. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a microphone. <laughs> you can get two. No, 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 no. No, please. But uh the the good thing is that you you could be right after the goal maybe people could expect it's done. Mm. And it was nice to see the guys not giving up and yeah. still yeah. locating the team in the last third and uh after a great uh, action from Pau that we know he has these skills we could create this uh, this chance that was uh, fantastic and uh, we could uh, actually um, draw the game yeah. at the end Flamur knows his job description he is the first one being disappointed we know that so it's nothing to discuss we're going to create more moments for more chances like this mm. and I'm sure he's going to be full sharp to to make the goals. The most yes. important so thing for me is that he was there. As a striker, he was there. He he got that opportunity and next one is going to place in goal, I think. Mm. And and ultimately, this was a very very good game of Sandefjord. And um I actually want to go as far as to say that it was a lucky win for for Rosenborg. It could easily have ended with a draw. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It wasn't it wasn't undeserved. No, but it wasn't as deserved as uh, Rosenborg coach said after the, when he got no. interviewed it wasn't nearly as deserved as he described it no but it wasn't undeserved i think no 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 the, the free in the second in, half i think Rosenborg was the dominating team yeah i agree but yeah. we're getting there and the positive yeah. thing talk about positive things when you sit at stands and you listen to the audience before all negative talk blah 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 after this game even if you lost people see that the players give 100% no one complains no it's very good it's yep. just that need to see that give everything mm. and then people don't care if they lose we'll see <laughs> <laughs> we're going to the play ratings <laughs> yes um I usually set these ratings alone and then we discuss <laughs> it when uh, we come here. Um the ratings are from 1 to 10. Mm. Where 6 is um what we call approved what we expect from the player. Mm. All below 6 is a little bit below what we expect. Mm-hmm. The usual standards and um everything above 6 is good. Mhm. Was that uh, clear enough? I think so. Yeah, yeah it was. <laughs> um I recall Hansen. I think it was some of your best player. He kept some in the game. Mm-hmm. Um had some amazing saves. Yeah, he did. Um it was that one one time when he was outside his box that could have been fatal, but it wasn't. So he got away with that. But I think it was a great game. He had two brilliant saves uh in a row, a double save. Yeah. Against Bentner. And that yeah. No, I think it was a good game from Eric. He gets a seven. Mm. Yeah, he's a real good goalkeeper and, and uh I'm a little bit amazed because I didn't believe that he was this good in the start of the season. Oh. But he's just growing for each game and this game is massive. He seems a little bit more focused in a way now than he was in the beginning. He was a little bit in the beginning he was a little bit all over the place. Now he's a little bit more focused, I think. Yeah, it just means that he's learning. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, feel free to slaughter us if you think. Uh, uh, I just have to say about Eric or Ingvar. I think Marty and me both we were f- from the first day pretty surprised about the level of both goalkeepers. Mm. It's pretty unusual to have these two profiles in the same team, mm. and actually pretty difficult to make the decision of yeah. who is going to play. We just see that both they have great potential. I mean, they are really good professionals, and uh, and the potential is so clear. I mean, Eric is true that he had great saves, and uh, and he he is really good with the feet as well. We saw it in the first half, especially going mm. out from pressure. So. Um, it's a good rate, and uh, and I think um, it's pretty fair according to to what was the game. Uh, but as I said uh, before, Sandefjord has two great goalkeepers, and we know that, and I know that they can help us a lot yeah. to mm-hmm. make this team better. Yeah, actually, we we're a lucky team to have those. Yeah, mm. here we are, um, Vicky. He gets uh, six for me. I think he had a decent game, really. Yeah, he has had a few games where we are been a little bit disappointed with him, but he was uh, he was back in this game. Yeah, yeah, he's more offensive offensive than he has been before. He's more the good old Vicky that we yeah used to know. But Uses his speed in, as we always in, said. He's yeah. he's going to come back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, he's on his way now. It's pretty fun because the rates are the rates over there are from my point of view according to maybe how much the player is acting with the ball and what the player does with the ball mm, yeah and of course our rates can be a little bit different because Vicky from my point of view could have higher rate based in all the work he's doing when he's not with the ball yeah mm. or far from the ball and we know it's really good work believe mm. us we have been discussing that okay <laughs> okay <laughs> because i tend to rate the players a little bit more throughout the game than Jörn does. Jörn does give them ratings <laughs> in how how they interact with the ball are you watching the are you watching tv are you watching the, the game on tv or, or in live Live at first, and then if I'm insecure okay. about something, I see it again. I'm just thinking that if you watch it on TV, of course you're gonna see more yeah. the players with ball. That uh, it was a joke. No one is laughing, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I understood what your point. <laughs> um, but uh, in my defense, that's not true. <laughs> okay, is. I don't see certain points of the game and wait after that. No, no, no. That's not what I mean. But I, when I try to argue for higher scores on some of the players. It is with the situations where they're not in, they are not interacting with the ball. Mm. I can't remember one uh, time that happened, but <laughs> no, but, it's, but I, I understand this. the point. <laughs> Wait, no. just think about one thing: players uh, of the ball normally they are attractor and looking always the ball, and we are actually telling them, "Don't look the, bo- don't look at the ball. Look at your teammates going around you." Mm. Imagine if that happened to the players. It's happening with us when we watch the game. Of course. Of course. So you always go around the ball area. Yeah. yeah. Um, the whole defensive line really gets uh, six. Um, mm-hmm. Gruru, Reima, Melde. I was quite surprised about uh, Erik Melde, to be fair, because uh, I think he did a brilliant job in a new position. Uh, to be fair, I think he deserves more than six. It's because he's been out a long time, yeah. and the amount of works he put in, and he blocks a lot of shots. Yeah, he does. He and does. he's everywhere. Mm. He has was a really, big really responsibility good. and he moves around all the time. Uh, combination with all the blocks, all the good defense and also good offensive. So I think this is the best game Mjell to play this year. And a good appliance for the start 11 next next match. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I think you should get him up to a 7. I agree. Okay, fine by me. <laughs> yeah, I got no no problem doing that at all. No, no, no. Um, I was thinking the same about uh, Christer, uh, really. Uh, Reima, as we call him. <laughs> I think he had a brilliant game yeah, all yeah. through uh, all throughout. Yep. Um, and Lars Guru also had a brilliant game, but it's the goal against. Yep, still it is. <laughs> um, yeah, and then Enrique. And here's the thing. It may be a bit harsh, uh, but 
uh, Enrique is my favorite Sanford player. <laughs> so I have really high expectations. High expectations of him. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's maybe colored the rating that I, that I gave him this time. It, it's a five. Um, but I think there's a few times when he gives away the ball when he shouldn't. Um, and that. Are you going to say something? <laughs> I'm waiting for you. Uh, I get so annoyed by that. And uh, the thing is, when he when he does give the ball away, it becomes a big chance for the opponent. And that's why <laughs> I give him a five and not a six. Because throughout the game, he finds the pockets, he finds the space, he uh, controls the tempo of the uh, the play that's on for his um, uh, doing. That was good English. <laughs> he controls the <laughs> that tempo. That was a good landing. Yeah. <laughs> he controls the tempo of the team with his passing. And that's his job. But uh, no, I don't know. I I agree with you on the five. You do? Yeah. You look a bit, a little bit nervous looking at me. I. <laughs> yeah, he's not. He's not. He's not bad. He's doing no, his job. But he's in some parts of the game. He's too sloppy. Mm. He's too. Not what you would call a hundred percent on. Mm. In sometimes he falls out a little bit. He falls asleep a little bit. So. He gets the ball stolen from him yeah. a few times, and he he making some bad pass bad passes. Who can end up catastrophically, whatever you call it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Some words are hard to <laughs> say. Yeah, yeah uh, but yeah, good game. For what I can see, but a little bit sloppy. So five would be okay. Mr. Elsa, look. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I don't agree. I think he played a, a good game. Um, and I think he makes up for a little bit of sloppiness with his uh, offensive um, parts in the game, especially when he is almost up and tries to shoot uh, and everything. So I, I, he needs to you get the six. probably saw him with the ball, not without the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Dust. <laughs> no, I, 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 I think he needs to get the six as well. Especially when we gave him but is this, seven. Is this, this is, uh, no, but, but seriously, is this... Is this what you expect from Enrique? So, in the in the in the last few games, Enrique has been very good. He's not giving you one evil eye; he's giving you two evil I eyes. See. But I have to ask because yeah, yeah, yeah. do you think Enrique was better or, or as good this game as has been the last two when he's got sixes? No, but I wanted him higher the last games also, okay. but I didn't get my will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Overruled. <laughs> Two against one. Yeah, Jordi don't have anything to say here. No, so. but I, <laughs> you, you, I, I, I love it. <laughs> I, I love the, the discussion. It's just once again, I think there are games and games mm -hmm. that was maybe not a game to look brilliant on the ball and just be efficient. And once again, there is some positions that, by some reason, you're going to be more exposed. Mm. And if we know that. Enrique, in that case, is one of the players maybe having more touches on the ball because the build-up is going through him, like Emil or Hovar. At some point, you're going to be exposed. So, of course, one of the mistakes, as you say, can be catastrophic mm -hmm. and end in something. But actually, it didn't. No, it didn't. So no. at the end, that's a fact. It didn't. And that's the risk of playing there. That's why he's doing what he does. Uh, it's like if a goalkeeper like Eric, we ask him to play with the feet under high pressure, it could be a wrong pass as well, and that's catastrophic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if we don't believe on them, we're never gonna have. We're never gonna know if that's possible or not. So I would say that five. It's a little bit maybe not fair enough from my point of view, <laughs> because I see I see as well. I see as well. Uh, well left with a hope. I see as well what Levy said that he's doing a lot of work there, and he, as you said, he's arriving more to the last uh, third, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. He's much. He's a little bit more offensive than before. But uh, okay, this is uh, okay, <laughs> yeah. I <I'm>... next. <laughs> yeah, next player. <laughs> next player. <laughs> he ends up in a five. Yeah. Um, Sturbeck. Yeah, I just have to say one thing though, because we say this every time we uh, uh, present the ratings that because football is a team game, uh. a single player rating is really hard to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but because there's consequences, so, as you say, where you play, um, it's the same with uh, Flammer later probably. Mm. We're, we're coming back to that. 
<laughs> Storbeck, Hova Storbeck. I think he had a good game. Yeah. He had a good I, game. I think uh, this role suited him really good. Yep. Much more than in the central normal central uh, midfield position. Yep. Yeah, behind uh, Holmen Johansson and uh, Mjelde. I think Storbeck as well deserves a seven because he puts down enormous effort yeah. without oh. I think he, he there's no one on that pitch that day who runs as much as Horvath no he's and it, everywhere and his pressing is brilliant he's pressing all the time yeah. all situations and that's what I see in, in Horvath so basically my best player if I have to have one best player for Sunfield that day is Horvath Stolbeck hmm. he goes he's back as a captain with a big K. Mm. C. A Norwegian K. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I can agree with that. A seven is, yeah, is he, he was he was massive. He was everywhere. Mm. Yep. Yeah, I agree. That's the Stolbeck we want to see every yeah. game. Yeah. And then there's Emil Paulson. And here's the same thing that uh with Enrique that I see a lot of potential in Emil. Uh and I see why you use him in that role. But I think he's too sloppy with his passes. That's that's the whole that's the whole point for me really. Yeah. He his positioning is good. <laughs> his pressing is good, but it's, I think he's sloppy with his passes. And I in my eyes he's the it's the player in midfield that loses the ball uh the most. Yeah, I agree with you in in some parts of way, but he's developing. He's, yeah, yeah, he's getting there. Yeah. Mm. He's been injured for a long time and I I also think he he does a lot of smart moves with the ball and he as you say he's always playable he mm. he moves a lot and that's a good quality yeah absolutely that's maybe like you say hard to see yeah and i would say that these positions uh, in central corridors in front of the back line where you have to come facing your own goal or not facing the own goal but you have to in one touch turn and mm. avoid uh, player pressing to you and the lever i mean that's not easy you have to have a good control of the space and mm. the opponent around you. That's where Enrique is really good, I and, think. And that's complicated, and we mm. see in Emil that capacity as well. Uh, so, of course, today, maybe he's not the the, the final product no, of no, no. himself, and but we know that. It's a player really committed into this development process, and we just try to do our best to help him to, to get exactly what we want in this position mm. from him. Yeah, I think it's I think it's coming there. I, yeah. I just think it's not there yet. I agree with your score, but mm. he's getting somewhere. I would like to see him on a six. Of course you will. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a little bit nicer than these guys, yeah. You got to no, remember no that Sonny lost the game. <laughs> Still. Yeah. It's against Rosenborg. Yeah, but I think it's passing it too sloppy. Yeah, still I I like to see him on a six. Yeah, but he gets a five. <laughs> <laughs> Overruled. <laughs> uh, I agree with you. Thanks a lot, mate. <laughs> uh, Muhammad Ofki, think it's one of his best performances in the uh, in the Sunfield shirt. He had a, a few amazing raids. Uh, he's really showed us his his uh, speed yeah. and his ability to to control the bo- the ball in high speed. Mm. It was really good. He was he was a really uh positive surprise in this match. Mm. I agree. He gets a six from me. Yeah. Yeah, same with me. Uh well I missed with Ofki, he's not been here so long, but when I see him play before he he's he hasn't been that he hasn't been that like I want to get involved. No. no. But now he's he's smiling. He enjoys the game. Mm. And then yep. I think he's the type of player when he enjoys the game he can do a lot of crazy things with the ball. I think he's an unpredictable player that yeah. can can do things on his own and I think it's a player that Sunview is going to get mm-hmm. he's going to get good yeah just as I think so too further out in the season yeah. uh, so good game and uh yeah happy to see his place with a smile on his face we all agree okay Flamwood he gets a five and uh, this is because of one thing and that's with the ball it's the chances that the chance that he misses Because that have to that has to go into the goal. He plays a decent game. Yeah, it's always runs yeah. like. But uh, yeah, and it was a winger this game. But as a striker, 
you need to put that ball in the net. That's that's all. <laughs> yeah, that's all. And yeah, he has some decent shots, and but you take both both strikers in in one yeah. time. They yeah. they do a good effort for the team. They run in defense. They're really good, but they are strikers. They need to. Put, the ball put in more there. short shots in. Yeah. Try a little bit more. Yeah. Be a little bit creative. Try when you have like two against one. Instead of passing the ball, try. Yeah. Try something. Yeah. I think that's been a lack of what Sanofi's been missing this this season. And but it's coming there. It's closer and closer. But I think Flamer was better than Pontus, but they get five both of them. Yeah, but, but I, what I may me with Pontus that he works. Out through the end of the game, yeah, he worked really hard. In I, the end, yeah, mm. I think it's lacking a bit of touch, uh, and that may be c- coming from self confidence or something, because uh, he hadn't scored in a while. In a while, but uh, I think when he gets, when he gets the feeling of the ball a little bit more, in the in the way that we're used to him having control of the ball, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to get better. But he just he lacks that last touch. Yeah, he maybe had yeah, a nice touch, the last one, as you say, but he, yeah. he's, he's really strong. That's what you see when you get like mm. play one against mm. one, and he's leaning into the defender. Uh, he's strong. Yeah, you see that he's not an easy, easy he, man to take out. And he mm. jumps crazy high. Yeah, <laughs> he does. Should it be a Swedish ski jumper <laughs> in the national yeah. team? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, th- I think if if he gets that last touch in place. We're going to see a lot of more goals from him this season. Mm. This season, mm. but that's the thing that's lacking for me. For for those two, it's putting the ball in the net. Yeah, but it's like Jordi say: first they start with the back, and then they yeah. push the yeah that's, a little uh, bit forward. Of course, it's. Uh, I mean, we need already goals from the first day we came here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but uh, absolutely, I agree that. Uh, if we score, it means that the rates for these guys will be higher. That's how it is. At yeah, the yeah. end, yeah. Uh, you did it, be, or you said before, eighty good seven because he make three saves. Exactly. That make the difference. So at the end, we know the strikers are there because they they scoring or creating chances. Mm. The good thing, as I said before, I think it's important to reinforce that we create chances. Yeah. I would be worried if yeah, we, yeah. we wouldn't. Mm. Because not, it's not because that long ago that, we didn't create chances. That's yeah, that's a, a problem. Then you are not even having a chance. But we had them. Yeah. Now it's true that we want to increase. You want guys to increase these rates, and that's going to happen if we score. So I agree that at the end everybody has a job description, and and in this case these guys in the last part of the pitch, uh, they have to make the difference. And I'm completely sure, and we know that that's going to happen. Yeah, of course. I have full confidence in them in that. It's just in this game, I thought it lacked. You've been awfully quiet there in the <laughs> Elche Church. It's no no use for me argumenting for my uh, scores because you won't listen to me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, actually, even though I think that uh, Castellati may be eligible for a six, um, it's okay with a five because they didn't score. So, okay. Okay. Yep. That was the player ratings. Um we have to move on. Yeah, we need to do this very fast now. <laughs> yeah. Come on, come on. Okay, how is in the way? It's the upcoming game. How is was your first game in charge, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. And that was a really really bitter match. Cuz it was that game Sonnefur was in total control, uh created chances, but had possession of 70%. Yeah. And Hausen scored on two corners. Yeah. And even the, the Hausen court said after the game that they didn't deserve the, the win. So the, I, I bet the guys are kind of wanting to make up for that loss. They exactly. should be. Sorry. They should be. Yeah. And uh, I think <laughs> I think it was a, a good uh, starting point from the view that uh, we could see that this possession was high. We could dictate the game in many phases uh, of it. Uh, but at the end, I mean, doesn't count much as soon as you can see the two corners. No. no. So positive in many ways, but we have to be uh, critics at some point and, and see that we never, uh, this game, uh, got the point. So 
uh, of course we can face this weekend this this uh, team with uh, positive mentality and mind setting because we know we already play recently mm. against them we got good game plan and we know we can do it even better after these uh, last two games yeah mm. so everything we can learn from them uh, is going to be used from the last game and uh, today i think we think we know we are more prepared than the f- three weeks ago four weeks ago where mm. when we start with the team and we we play hockey soon mm. at home i really think so too um just a few stati- uh, statistics i have a babysitter at home i say one hour i need to go yeah goodbye so i say i can yeah. have my like sorry no 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 <laughs> yeah your score prediction yeah. let's get it uh score prediction i think we it's a hard game away but i think uh how soon is going to score one and sunfield two and castrat and engblom is going to get one one each i think they they need to score now And the team, same as started against Rosenborg. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Been a pleasure meeting you, Jordi. My pleasure. Take care. Take care, bye. Hello. Hello. Haugesund is in sixth place. They got 25 points in 15 games. They've won two, got one draw and two losses the last five games, um, including the, the win against Sunfjord. I think they're probably going to play in a 4-4-1-1 or 4-4-2 with Bråtveit in goal. Haraldsheid, Skjerve, Karamoko and Størås. Akin Tola, Tronstad, Nilsen. Um, and maybe Grinheim or Leite. Uh, we'll see. But I think Grinheim is going to play in, in an offensive midfield role and then Gjertskjær as a striker. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, normally, I would say that Haugesund is a team that Sandefjord should beat. Yes. And uh, giving the the last the home game against Haugesund, I think they have a really good chance. As uh, Jody said, we can take the experience from that match, and we can tweak and and, and adjust the the small details that didn't work out as we wanted them to, mm. especially the defensive uh, play on the. <laughs> On the, on the corners, <laughs> and uh, so so I have a really good feeling into this match, and especially with the, the Rosenborg uh, game uh, fresh in memory, a very very good game of Sandefjord. Mm. I think that Haugesund uh, is going to be surprised of the Sandefjord team that is going to Haugesund and, and beat them mm. on Sunday. That's my prediction, anyway. <laughs> It's a good one. It's a good one. Yes. <laughs> Shall we uh, pick a team? Yes. <laughs> we can do that. Yeah. Now it's interesting to see if Jordi is just going to shake his head or uh, agree with us. Probably he is. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I want to start out with... Uh, with um, What I, kind of formation uh, are we using here? Give them to the formation. We are going to pick the players. Okay. <laughs> They are going to play all over the place anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, I think we will start out with, uh, with uh, uh, four uh, in the defense line. Um, probably with... Uh, Because I I want to start with the four players that started now, so mm. maybe we want to have uh, Mielde with still with a kind of offensive role as he had now. So that means that sometimes four, sometimes three in the defense line. I think that would be the the, so the same good thing. back four. Yeah, as last time and uh, Horman in Mola uh, in goal. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then it's the midfield. I am. Um, You see, I would change one thing. Yeah, I would put Yuki in. Yes, and then I would uh, take out Palson. Yeah, put Mielde there instead, along with Vyas, and have Sturbeck in front as last time. Yeah, okay. In front of those two. two. So then we are three, three in the defense line. We put no, Miel- no, 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 four, four. Yeah, but you said put Mielde there instead. Instead of Palson. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And put Yuki in yeah. in Mielde's place. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, so Jukke should play defense, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we got Bindia, Groru, Reima, Jukke. Yes. In the back four. Yeah. And we got Endrik uh, and Mielde in the holding two midfielding two. Yeah. And then we got Vajes and Ofkir. No, Vajes and uh, Sturbeck. No, Sturbeck. Yeah. Sorry, he's going to be in front, just uh, behind. 
Pontus? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Are you visualizing it? Yeah, that's why I'm closing my eyes. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I'm trying to see it. And yeah. then Ofkir and Castrati on each side. Yeah. As wings. Yeah, I think we should try that. But I want Castrati moving much more inside than he has. Yeah. And then he, he probably against. will. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah, but I agree. We we take out Paulson and we put uh, we put Yuki in instead. Yeah. Yeah. And then push Miel up. Yes. <laughs> Who is the striker you said? Uh, uh Pontus is Pontus. the <laughs> single striker, yeah. Mm. But I would consider moving Pontus and Flamor. Mm. They're changing positions. Because I think Flamor is so good at that first um, pressure line, much better than Pontus in my eyes. Because he he's really good at stressing the, the defense when they're trying to play out. Mm. So I think with Flamor on to, uh, in the uh, striker position, I think Haugesen will play more long balls. Mm. That's my opinion. It's a good point. Why not? And uh, of course, that's that's why it's so difficult. I mean, you could see potential in in all plays. When you look at them uh, located in different positions, yeah. and uh, but at the same time, that's a possibility uh, for us. So we we don't get stuck into a limitation of options. Uh, actually, it's the opposite. We mm. we can play with uh, all of them and see their uh, skills and possibilities uh, according to the needs of of the team in front of the opponent. Mm. So um, another possibility is to. Uh, bench Yuke as we did the la- last time. Put Mielde back in the left back position, and then put Sturbeck down. Besides Vaez, and yeah. then have Pau. Yeah. And that uh, Pau can also do a good job there. Yeah? yeah. Definitely. In the ten role. In the ten role. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you see, I mean, you gave another option now, and the good thing is that we have people can play out and in. Mm. This has actually been uh, kind of difficult for us to pick teams this season because there is a lot of good players which can do a lot of different roles. Mm. Uh, so in in earlier years we have it's it's been more easy to pick a team because we have yeah. we know this player there and this player there and that's set. But now we can change them all around and still have a good team. So mm. we can totally understand your um, problems picking the right team mm. because there are so many good players to choose from. Exactly. And as I said, that's just uh, a luxury. Yeah, yeah, of and course. You can, uh, go around and see possibilities with, with all of them. Uh, but uh, as I said, if we want to create this variation into the system, so be more uh, flexible to surprise the opponent as well. And as I said before, to become unpredictable. Mm. That's pretty interesting to to develop uh, and just uh, yeah strength one of the parts of of this uh, this project which is uh, take the maximum potential as I said before from every player. Yep, brilliant. We're going to try to round things off. Yep, we have to say talk to Ayans Traffic School for sponsoring. We, yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't forgot. You changed around something. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Like to play a little bit. <laughs> yes, I get frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to to have a, a guess at a match uh, result. Yep. How are you uh, comfortable doing that? No problem. We always start with the guest. I mean, we we're gonna win. Easy, easy, uh, easy as this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna win from Jordi there. But I yeah. said before, it's no the choice. Yeah. No. And the players know so. But I'm not, you know, of course, I mean, we can just say it, mm. but uh, it's about creating the feeling that we, we, we're we going to do it. Mm. And we work the whole week just to create that feeling. Mm. Yeah, We believe in the possibilities. You said you make a great analysis, guys, and we see that the potential is there. Mm. We just need, we need just to connect the pieces in the right way and make them work. Yeah, mm. And that's something that is possible. And we already saw it the last weeks and... We just see it uh, uh, as a great chance to really bring what the club and the players deserve uh, the next weeks. Yeah. Brilliant. You're optimistic, I guess? Yes, I am. Um, <clears throat> defense, defensively, I think we played rather good against Haugesen last, apart from the two corners, mm. which they scored on. I think we the, the defense worked very good. And we saw 
against Rosenborg. It works. So I think that we will have a clean sheet. And actually, this is about revenge. And this is about the players who wants to score, who hasn't done it in a while. So we'll score four goals. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> Castrati will take two. Mm. Pontus will take one. And Vallejas will do the thing that he tried to on against Rosenborg, but didn't, uh, yeah, but he didn't shoot, achieve He'll shoot with his left foot this yes, time. Yes, from about 30 meters. And yeah, <laughs> it will be an amazing goal. Brilliant. Yeah, that's my prediction. I usually predict 3-1, but that hasn't worked all year. <laughs> so I'm changing it this uh, match to see if that works. Um, I'm going to say 5-2. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, because Haugesson is going to uh, to look for goals. It's going to be 4-0 or something like that. And then Haugesson is going to look for goals and Sandra is going to score in the counter-attack. Um, but f- I don't I don't understand now. 5-2 for who? For Sandra Fjord, of course. But then he's 2-4. 2-5. Two two five. Five. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 2-5. No, I was just scared. <laughs> yeah. I was running <laughs> to the door now. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> 5-2 in Sandra's advantage. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, Pontus has to score soon so he's going to score Flamur is going to score um, I think Mjelde has a possibility to score against Haugesund yeah. I think he thrives uh, on not art- artificial uh, artificial grass uh, Groru at the corner and then Mohamed Ofgir Amazing mm. If Södlund is in the, the uh, is on the bench and he gets playing time. I think he's going to score as well. So, so then six two. Yeah. If Sudden is uh, with the team, it's going to be six. If not, five. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. 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 Good enough. <laughs> you have to get the ketchup effect sometime. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Uh, Jordi, thanks a lot. This has been a real pleasure. I have to say. Thank you so much. We've been talking for one hour and forty minutes. It's mm-hmm. going to be one of our longest episodes, mm-hmm. but uh, definitely worth it. Oh yeah. So uh, yeah, this has been this has been really interesting. I have to say, thank you. It has been really nice as well to have the possibility to meet you guys. And uh, if my boys can now be known by Sandefjord supporters and uh, people, I'm more than happy. And uh, I'm just saying thank you for the welcoming, which has been really kind since the first day. Really good. Thanks a lot. And. Uh... It's soon summer summer holidays, yes. so have a good summer. But first, Haugesund is going to get beaten.